Hi everybody, this is John Lamazny, and um, as always, I'm trying to show people how to use open source software in order to do design. Tonight is no different. I'm uh, planning on showing you some of the basics of using Inkscape because um, a lot of the designs that I do are just sort of uh, quick shorthand to myself. The, the, they're things that I do that, that I'm familiar with because I spent so much time in the application. I've gotten some feedback recently, very, very valued feedback, that uh, let me know that I, I wasn't really doing enough to show people how to use the application at a, at a sort of basic level. So I'm going to do the simple design that you see, us he that you see here um, as a way of explaining one of the key tools inside Inkscape, and that is the ellipse tool, which is this um, icon right here in the toolbar. Uh, if you use the ellipse tool, you can create circles, ellipses, and arcs. And so, I'm going to go ahead and delete what I have here by selecting all this, hitting delete on my keyboard. I'm going to hit 5 on my keyboard in order to show the edges of the page. In other words, if you hit 5 um, and you're not inside the text tool, what it will do is show you the uh, edges of the page in Inkscape. And at some other time, I'll go over how to set up page size, etc. Tonight's really just about this ellipse tool. So I'm going to click on the ellipse tool, and now the next mark I make will be an ellipse. Now, if I just go ahead and draw, it will have um, unequal. Uh, ratio. In other words, it'll be stretched like this. If I hold down control though, what happens is it uh, constrains the ellipse to a perfect circle. And I find myself holding down control an awful lot inside Inkscape. Um, so when I do that, I have my perfect circle. I've now let it go. And I can go to the selection tool in order to manipulate it. I can move it over here. I can move it over here. And uh, what I want to do first and foremost is I want to duplicate this. And you can see it looks like the circle got a lot darker. The reason it got a lot darker is because it's translucent and a duplicate was made. So now that I have this duplicate, I can move the duplicate. And you can see that um, I have a perfectly equal set of circles. Now I'm going to do something that... Um, is pretty important in Inkscape. I'm going to align these two circles. There's a lot of ways that I could do it, but the easiest way, in my opinion, is to use the alignment tool, which is up here in the upper toolbar. When I click on that, I get a sidebar for aligning and distrib uh, distribution. And what I can do is, for example, um, if I want to align the circles on a central um, line, I just click on this button here, and what happens is those circles are now perfectly aligned. The top and the bottom are perfectly equal. You can see that the lines overlap uh, on exactly the same uh, places, right? There's an overlap right there. So now that I have that, uh, the other piece of content for me is to add this text in order to indicate what these circles in this Venn diagram that we're creating uh, are representing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my text tool. I'm going to click once here and I'm going to type in ME. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to type in YOU. And I'm going to click here and I'm going to type US. And I can do the same thing as far as alignment is concerned with uh, the text that I did with the circles. In fact, I can select all of these items. Whoops. I'm going to hit 5 again so that I can uh, center on the page. I'm going to go back into my alignment sidebar. I'm going to click that uh, align on horizontal axis and close that dialog. You can see now the circles, the text, are all uh, lined up. 
Now I want the center of the Venn diagram to be a bit, a bit larger, so I'm going to hold down shift and click on my arrow button, I'm sorry, type my arrow button on my keyboard. The reason I'm holding down shift is because it increases the amount of space that something's moved when I do that. If I don't hold down shift and I move as I am with this uh, word us, then uh, what happens is it moves in smaller increments. So if you want more control, just use the arrow. If you want um, more distance covered, hold down shift as you move with the arrow. Now I'm going to select all of this again, which I could also do with a control A. And I'm going to resize everything from the center out. The way that I do that is by holding down control, holding down shift at the same time, and then dragging on the corner here. And what that'll do is it will resize from the center in all directions equally. Now with everything still selected, I'm going to move this uh, to the right a bit. I'm also going to shift arrow to move that group of objects, group of selected objects, uh, down. So I'm pretty happy with this. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some color in the background. And the way that I'm going to do that is by uh, creating a rectangle that's exactly the same size as the page. Now for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make sure that snapping is on. Snapping is this button here, and all of these other tools down here are related to it meaning that um, these are all options for snapping, uh, whether an object will uh, snap on various points in objects. You don't need to know too much about that, You just right now anyway. You just need to know that um, snapping allows you to be very precise about the way that you align objects uh, without using the alignment tool. The most important thing for me in this operation I'm about to do is to snap to the page border, which is uh, this icon here. So if I want to turn snapping off, I just click this first button and all these other options go off. If I want to turn snapping on, I just click it again. So that's a toggle. But because I'm going to make a rectangle that's the same size as the page, I want to make sure that the align to page, snap to the page uh, button is on. So now with my rectangle tool, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click and drag. And you can see that the color of the rectangle is the same color as my uh, circles. And I'll change that in just a second so we have some distinction between the circles and the background. I'm going to go ahead and make that a uh, nice deep red like so. So uh, I did that just by clicking on the color palette down here. If I click on my selection tool and select that rectangle, which was the last item added and therefore the closest to us as the viewer in um, depth. I'm going to take that and move that to the bottom of the page, which allows those other circles to move forward because I've moved this rectangle backward. So one more thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select my uh, one circle and I'm going to shift select my second circle and the reason that I'm shift selecting is so that I can um, select more than one object at one time. You can tell at any time what you have selected by looking down in the uh, in the bar down here it'll say two objects of type ellipse in layer layer one. Uh, that tells me that these two ellipses are currently selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give that those both a nice dark line and how I'm going to do that is by um, instead of clicking on the color, which would change the color of the objects, I'm going to hold down shift and click on the color. And what that does is it chooses the color of the uh, stroke, the stroke around the outside of the object. Okay? So, uh, very finally, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the uh, text. I'm going to do that by shift selecting me, us, and you. I'm going to open up my text dialog. Here is my text dialog. And I'm going to scroll 
all the way up. Matter of fact, I think I'm just going to use Lead Gothic. Because I like Lead Gothic quite a bit. I'm going to Control Shift Resize. Whoops. I'm going to move me in a bit. I'm going to move you in a bit. I'm going to select those three pieces of text, size them up a bit again, control shift resize. And because I'm using the arrows, <clears throat> I don't have to be too concerned about um, I don't have to be too concerned about alignment anymore because once they're aligned, I can use the arrows to very precisely move them. And um, the one thing that I think is missing is I want to have some character to this background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the gradient tool. And the gradient tool has these options up here. You can barely see it, but the option for radial gradient is right up here, this little uh, icon right here. I'm going to double click on that and what that does is it puts a default gradient on there. I'm gonna turn it and what that does is um, creates a bit of a like a V. Because I have snapping on the uh, gradient nodes also snap to the edge of the page and my center of my gradient is that nice dark red that we started with I'm going to add another node to our gradient uh, radial gradient there I'm going to add that nice dark red color to that gradient node and I'm going to add an even darker color towards the outside. Now that I've done that I want to move that gradient out a bit not exactly happy with how that turns into that dark color so I'm gonna try a different red or maybe even a brown and see if that works better yeah I think it does even make this a bit brighter yeah that's nice has nice warmth to it so that is the ellipse tool amongst other tools and I hope that this is helpful in uh, showing you how I like to use Inkscape I'm gonna try to do some more very basic tutorials on how to get around in Inkscape and to make it do and uh, allow you to create what you see in your head on screen. Thanks so much.